Uh, today we'll be demoing GitCube. Uh, my name is Thiru. I am one of the authors of GitCube. I am a platform engineer at Hasura. And a little bit of background. Uh, GitCube is was one of the components of Hasura. It, it was used to drive the deployment process on Hasura, which is a pass on Kubernetes with backend services. So uh, you you could use the backend services and write your own custom services and deploy your application, right? So we recently open sourced the deployment part and called it GitCube. Uh, why is it called GitCube? Because the deployment process is based out of Git. So all you need to know as a developer is apart from committing your code, you can just do a git push on a remote. Uh, remote is the server side of your uh, git repository and just pushing to that remote will actually go and deploy your application on Kubernetes. So we open source this so that uh, we can evolve this product. People can contribute more uh, features can enhance the usability of this tool and go the open source route, right? We, we never know what direction a product like this could take. So we are just open to uh, evolving this tool and hopefully it will become much better and uh, will attract more developers to use it for whatever use cases that they have. So that's uh, the background on GitCube. And where does GitCube fit into the development or deployment workflows on Kubernetes? So there is a lot of active uh, discussions and there is a community uh, on Kubernetes which defines how an application de de development workflow should look like on Kubernetes. There have been a lot of tools which have emerged in the past few months. Uh, you might already know a few of these tools like Helm, Draft, Scaffold, and a lot, a lot of many other tools. So this clearly shows that solving the application development workflow or deployment workflow on Kubernetes is thought about differently by different sets of people. And it is a problem that needs to be solved because not everybody is an operations person. People are, uh, there are developers who do not want to meddle around with a lot of operation stuff. They just want the quickest possible way to deploy apps. So GitCube is one of, uh, is a tool in one of these categories. It's a deployment tool. You can quickly deploy your applications on Kubernetes just using Git. So you don't need to know a lot of, lot of things about Kubernetes. Uh, you don't have to play around with kubectl a lot. You don't have to play around with any CI CD system or pipelines as such. It's, it's very, it's, it's very intuitive as well as very straightforward. So it's one of the quickest ways to deploy your apps on Kubernetes. Uh, so let's get started on the demo. I will just share my screen now. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see my screen. Uh, are you guys able to see my screen? Can someone please uh, just type on the chat or just give me a thumbs up? Cool. Awesome. So here I have the Google Cloud Console open where I have deployed uh, an application. Uh, sorry, I have deployed Git. Uh, I have deployed a Kubernetes instance. So I'm just going to connect to that. So let me just show you what I have. So I can do kubectl get nodes to see what all nodes I have. I have a single node Kubernetes cluster. Cool. That will do for this demo. So how do you get started, right? How do you how do you set up GitCube and how do you what is your what does your typical workflow look like? So let's head over to the repository. So this is the repository. And to get started is a very simple process. First we install GitCube and then we follow an example. And the installation is itself a two-step process. The first step is to create the resources that GitCube needs on your cluster. 
so we'll just create uh, these bunch of resources which are which are defined in this one file so we created a crd we created service account role bindings config maps and few deployments this defines your uh, uh, gitcube uh, application so now gitcube is running on your cluster the you need to do another thing you need to expose one of the deployments as a service so that we can access that externally like from my local machine i want to access uh, one of the services on the cluster so to do that is pretty simple you can use the kubectl expose command or you can have a service definition which expose, exposes this deployment called git, git kubectl it can be of any type i'm using type load balancer here because i'm on gke and that's a very fast process you can have node code you can have external name whatever you have to do, uh, expose uh, the service externally cool so i will just show how the service looks like uh it's in cube system namespace so the load balancer is being provisioned so the external ip is pending so we'll just let it provision and till then uh, we'll move forward the next step is to follow this example so it's in a different repository uh the first step is install git cube which we have already done the second step is to clone this repo so i'm just going to clone this repo awesome and i am going to go into the directory and you can see i have few things set up here one thing which is required for git cube to work is you should have a docker file because a docker file defines what to build what is your application exactly and uh, what are the rules to make a docker image which can be uh, published or exposed on kubernetes right so moving forward the next step is to create a uh, few resources which is which are defined in kts.yaml so what does let's look at what does kts.yaml have so kts.yaml has a deployment with uh, some image so this is a base image right uh, you need to define this is a one time setup thing like you do this initially so you have to define a deployment with a base image and you have to define your environment variables uh your volume mounts whatever you want to uh, configure your deployment to be so you have to do that once and that and you can use any base image to get started with this deployment and also we are exposing a service so that we can actually uh, use this deployment access it uh, through the browser and uh, actually make use of it right so we are also uh, exposing a service for this deployment so i'm going to create this and this is a one time thing okay so we have created those resources and this is where non -kub traditional kubernetes things enters into the picture we have a file called remote.yaml in our repository so let me just show you how that looks so uh if you notice this has an api group which is very different so that is because this is a custom resource this is managed by git cube and this has the specification for this has three parts the first part which is commented here is a registry section a registry section defines if you do a git push right and you build your image you also want to push it to an external repository so that on the cluster you if you deploy an application it can pull that image from the external repository so this is especially mandatory if you are on a multi node cluster because on a multi node cluster git cube will be on some node it is building the image on some node whereas your app whereas kubernetes may uh, schedule your pod your container on some other node 
so there needs to be a way so that the deployment can actually fetch it uh, on the node where it is scheduled so it has to contact an external repository so that is the first first section and we'll keep this commented for this demo because we have a single node cluster and the pods can only be deployed on that single node and that is also the node where gitcube is actually building your image so it can find the image locally the second part is uh, is called deployments so notice that we created a deployment initially right so we just define some metadata about that deployment here so that uh, when if you have multiple deployments and you want to push that simultaneously uh, gitcube actually knows which deployment uh, which container belongs to which deployment and uh, expose that as as it should right so that's that's what deployments is for and it it has a key called containers which defines what all containers you have and it has a path which says where is your source code so dot means it's in the current uh, present directory and it also needs the location of the docker file the third part is authorized keys so if you are doing git push you need to have authentic authorization to do that push so if you just have to specify your sh public key in the speed and you can you will be able to push to git queue cool so i am going to run this small command which is going to copy my public key into this remote so let me just show you how the remote looks like so this is my public key it's been added and i'll skip the multi node part i already told you why we need this and uh, since we have a single node cluster this is not required cool so the next step is to create this remote we just wrote something to the remote it's created awesome so it's created uh the next step is to get something out of this remote object so i'm going to show you how the remote object actually looks like after it is created in kubernetes so kubectl get remote example minus o yaml there you go so you have these are uh, uh this is some data which is added by the kubernetes server so you have some metadata and there is a status field and the status field has a remote url field which has our get remote url so we are going to just copy this the next step is pretty straight forward it you have to you got a git remote url you need to add this to your remote add this to your repo so i'm going to get remote add example the remote that i got from the uh, remote resource uh very close to the end now next step is git push uh, git push to the remote so git push example master so as you can see once we did a git push it built a docker image and it's trying to update uh, it's trying to update the deployment as well and it successfully updated it so whatever we had in this repo is now deployed on kubernetes so let's check out what we have in this repo so we can use kubectl proxy to access services which are inside the cluster and there you go this is what was there in the repo which we successfully deployed using git push i'm going now this i'm going to show uh, what a typical workflow looks like like now you want to edit something right you want to you want to do uh, you want to do some changes and you want to deploy it again to kubernetes so So say I just change this uh, file a little bit. Now all I do is I will commit it, and I'll get push it again. I 
and a new image is built now and the new image is again deployed there you go so let's see if this there you go you see the changes are uh, reflected and this is what a typical workflow looks like now you don't use kubectl you don't do any configuration you all you do is commit your code push it and that is all uh, you need to do to deploy your application so uh, having said that uh, they, why why do we why do we care about this right why why not use kubectl or why not use uh, something else to do this we believe that git is very natural tool for a developer he or she does not have to uh, learn about anything new or the patterns around any new tooling uh, all a person uh, all a developer has got to do is just configure something initially and follow the basic practice of committing code and pushing code right so this is why we like git cube and we think it's a simple way for developers to deploy applications on uh, kubernetes and we also feel uh, so i'll just stop sharing my screen now i'll just uh, so that was the end of the demo